everyone, Allison here, and I just finished building my van life floor, and now I'm going to tell you how I did it. First of all, here is a little bit about floor building, if you're trying to build out a floor in your van. There really isn't a right way and a wrong way to do it. You will find there is a good way, there is a better way, and there is a more crappy way. You just kind of have to find out what that means for you when you build your own floor. And you may watch a lot of videos to gain inspiration, like this video. All I can do is tell you how I built out my floor. I did learn how to build out a floor in a van from YouTube videos, and you can too. First of all, I'm going to show you the layers of my floor and I will tell you which order I put each layer in so you can decide for yourself how you want to build your floor. Here is a picture of the layers of my floor and here is a labeled photo. Underneath, at the very bottom, I put kill mat and cork, and you can't really see that in this photo because it is covered over with the shiny bottom layer that you can see, which is the duct insulation. A lot of van lifers use the, bla the brand called Reflectix, but I did not. I used something called R8 HVAC duct insulation, and I put this over the bottom layer which is kill mat that is a sound deadening material and in the grooves of the van floor I put the cork strips of cork underlayment next I did reinstall the original van flooring that came with my van my mom is helping me build my van and she figured well it's a perfectly good floor it shouldn't go to waste it should go back in the van and I figured, okay, that's probably a good idea. Most people, I don't think, put their original floor back into their van, but heck, I did. The next layer on top of the original van flooring, on top of that black layer, is the polyiso rigid foam insulation. Most people would probably say that I went way overkill, I overdid it on this layer, and it's totally unnecessary to have a two inch piece if of polyiso rigid foam, but you're certainly able to get thinner pieces of this at the hardware store. When I was at the hardware store originally, I took the thinner piece off of the shelf and I just felt in my gut that I just needed to do the two inch piece instead, so that's what I did. Um, you just kind of have to feel out what is best for you to do for your van floor. I did want to make it four seasons so that I could possibly go skiing in the mountains with my house, but heck, uh, if you're only going to run your van life van around in warm places, you certainly don't need this thick of a layer or this layer at all. I did want to build my floor well enough to put in radiant floor heating, but, uh, well, that's kind of expensive, so I'm going to do it my way. And the next layer above the polyiso rigid foam is the birch plywood. Most van life van floors do have a layer of plywood, and the reason for this is to screw furniture down into the floor. I don't plan to screw furniture into my van life floor, but most people who are building out vans do plan to screw like cabinets down into the floor and this is what this plywood subfloor layer is for. Next on top of the subfloor I put a cork underlayment layer and on top of the cork underlayment I put the vinyl coated plywood. Originally I wanted to put luxury vinyl that is interlocking slats to be the very top layer of my floor, but when I was at the hardware store, the vinyl coated plywood was so much cheaper. So I just decided to go with that instead, and I can always take the floor out later and put in whatever else I want in the future. 
So those are the layers of my floor. Again, you just have to feel out what is right for you. I certainly didn't follow any one person's advice on YouTube. I did it the way I wanted to. Now about some of those good ways, better ways, and crappy ways for your van life floor, you might find that you feel like your floor has all three of those things. I definitely feel like my floor has all three of those things. Uh, some good things that I feel like are good, other people might feel like they are crappy, is I put, um, I put insulation in for enough for it to be a four season van. Other people might think that I went way uh, too far gung-ho on my insulation and that it was unnecessary to put in such a thick uh, layer of insulation in. So it's kind of all a matter of opinion. I also made the floor white and van life vans make it dirty often. So I have a plan that I will cover it with something like a thin carpet type of material that I can just roll out, um, shake out, and wash frequently. Some maybe not as pleasing things that I did on my floor is that I put in this um, molding here and it's just what I had around, so it's not actually made to be molding. It's kind of this rubber bumpery type stuff, but it's actually made to be a sound deadening, weather stripping type of material. I also, this siding part, I was kind of really um, baffled about how I was going to get that done, but my mom had some closet siding in the garage. She just happened to have this from somebody else's project and she collected it. So I didn't have to go searching for my side for the floor either. So that's one thing that I really like. I really like that my Nissan NV200, the floor is only uh, seven feet by four feet. Uh, because sheets of material often come in 4x8 and I just had to have a foot chopped off the end and then I had to make a template out of cardboard and just kind of cut around little places on the edges. Another thing that I didn't do that I a lot of uh, van life floors that I saw on YouTube like to finish out the the floor all the way to the edge. Um, I didn't do that because that's just how my how big my materials are. But if you have a bigger van like a Sprinter or a Ford Transit or a Dodge Ram Promaster, you're going to want to make a template and. Uh, fill in this part and you're going to want to put your materials um, long ways like this instead of the way you're going to want to put them cross ways like this instead of the long way which is the way that I did my materials because my van is so small I was able to use just one sheet for my floor and that's one thing that I also really like about the small vans for the floors. Another thing I did on the floor, it was probably a mistake. I might have to fix it later. Van life people will probably tell me it's a, it was a terrible choice. Uh, but my floor is a floating floor and that means that I didn't use any adhesive or screws or bolts to um, secure the floor together or to the body of the van and they say this is bad because if your fan rolls over your floor is gonna go everywhere. Um, I do have a few bolt holes 
two in the front and two in the back. And if I want to bolt my floor to the body of the van, I can do that. I will have to get bolts and I will have to take each layer out and screw the uh, drill bit down just at the right place where the bolt hole goes into the floor, into the middle of the van and I will have to put in some silicone or caulking down the whole hole so that I don't get rust and water leaking everywhere in my floor and just bolt that thing to the metal. Uh, I don't know if I'm gonna do that. I might die in a rollover accident if my floor fall everywhere. <sighs> All these choices. I might also try to, there are lots of um, holes in the side here and I might try to get a bracket that goes from the holes uh, down to the floor and hold it in. That's probably going to be the choice that I'm going to make more likely than taking the whole floor out again. Uh, we'll see. I put the molding on around the wheel wells. Maybe I didn't do the best job, but heck, I'm going to be the really the only one who cares. And that's kind of like what I had to say to myself a lot while building this floor is I'm going to be the only one who cares. So maybe it doesn't really matter if it doesn't look perfect. Uh, another phrase that my mom and I kind of came up with when cutting out some of the boards was freehand like an artist because sometimes I just had to take the saber saw and make a curve and maybe it wasn't perfect, but heck, who cares? <laughs> Except me. <laughs> there were times also when I wanted to do something. My mom didn't think that it was the best way to do it, but my just sort of my gut feeling said that I needed to do it a certain way, so, so I did it that way, and it usually ended up being a good choice. Having a building buddy is really important in your van life building especially your floor building so you can carry the materials around and put them in and out have one person in the side sliding door and one person at the back and kind of adjust the materials as you need it so those are some tips that I have from building out my own floor and I hope that you have picked up some inspiration and you can go build your own floor too! Wonderland. If you're a millennial and beyond looking to become a Rome owner, maybe retire early and see the wonderlands of the wild, then this is the place for you. Remember to like, subscribe, and save this video to all of your van life and Rome life playlists. For more information in less time, adjust your playback settings to watch these videos on 1.5 speed. If you'd like to follow my adventure or you need a consultant to help you get from a house that doesn't move into a home that does, then visit my website at www.alisonwonderland.info. 
See you in Wonderland.